why I eat cheese every day and how it functions in my body. Cheese is a dairy product made from milk, usually sourced from cows, goats, sheep, or buffalo, although other mammals' milk can also be used. It is produced by coagulating or curdling milk, separating the solid curds from the liquid whey, and then processing and aging the curds to achieve various textures, flavors, and characteristics. The basic ingredients for making cheese include milk, starter cultures, bacteria, rennet, or other coagulating enzymes, and salt. Additional ingredients or processes may be used depending on the type of cheese being made. Here's a general overview of the cheesemaking process. Coagulation. The first step involves heating the milk and adding starter cultures, which are specific strains of bacteria that acidify the milk and contribute to flavor development. Rennet, or another coagulating enzyme, is then added to the milk to cause it to coagulate or curdle. This process separates the milk into solid curds and liquid whey. Cutting and cooking. The curds are cut into smaller pieces to release more whey and facilitate further moisture removal. The curds are then cooked at a specific temperature to expel additional whey and develop the desired texture. Draining and pressing. The curds are drained of excess whey and placed into molds to shape them into the desired form. Some cheeses may be pressed to expel more whey and create a denser texture. Salting. Salt may be added to the cheese curds either during or after the molding process. Salt enhances flavor, acts as a preservative, and helps control moisture levels. Aging. After molding and salting, Many cheeses undergo a period of aging or ripening, during which they develop their characteristic flavors and textures. Aging can take place for a few weeks to several years, depending on the type of cheese. During aging, cheeses are stored in temperature and humidity-controlled environments, where various biochemical and microbial processes occur. Packaging. Once the cheese is aged to the desired level, it is typically wrapped or packaged for distribution and sale. Cheese comes in a wide variety of textures, flavors, and forms, ranging from soft and creamy to hard and crumbly, and from mild to sharp in flavor. It is a versatile ingredient used in cooking, baking, and as a standalone food item, enjoyed around the world in countless culinary creations. During digestion, the process of breaking down cheese begins in the mouth, where chewing and saliva help to mechanically and enzymatically break down the food. Salivary enzymes start to break down complex carbohydrates present in cheese, although the amount is typically minimal since cheese is low in carbohydrates. Once swallowed, the cheese enters the stomach where it encounters gastric juices containing hydrochloric acid and enzymes like pepsin. These substances work to further break down the cheese, particularly its proteins. The acidic environment of the stomach helps to denature the proteins, making them more accessible to enzymatic digestion. Next, the partially digested cheese moves into the small intestine, where the majority of nutrient absorption takes place. Here, the pancreas secretes enzymes such as proteases, lipases, and amylases to continue breaking down the cheese into smaller molecules that can be absorbed. Bile, produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder, is released into the small intestine to aid in the digestion and absorption of fats present in the cheese. As the cheese is broken down into its constituent components, amino acids from proteins, fatty acids and glycerol from fats, and various minerals and vitamins, they are absorbed through the walls of the small intestine and enter the bloodstream. From there, these nutrients are transported to various tissues and organs throughout the body to support cellular function, energy production, and tissue repair. Any undigested components of the cheese, such as dietary fiber or lactose, if present in lactose-containing cheese, continue through the digestive tract and may be fermented by bacteria in the large intestine potentially leading to the production of gases and other byproducts that contribute to bowel movements and overall gut health. Overall, the process of cheese digestion involves the mechanical and enzymatic breakdown of its components in the mouth, stomach, and small intestine, leading to the absorption of nutrients and the elimination of waste products. During digestion, the proteins in cheese are broken down into their constituent amino acids through a series of enzymatic reactions. This process primarily occurs in the stomach and small intestine. In the stomach, gastric juices containing hydrochloric acid and the enzyme pepsin begin the breakdown of proteins into smaller polypeptides. Pepsin breaks peptide bonds between amino acids, reducing the protein molecules into smaller chains of amino acids called peptides. As the partially digested cheese moves into the small intestine, it encounters pancreatic enzymes secreted by the pancreas. These enzymes, including proteases such as trypsin, chymotrypsin, and carboxypeptidase, 
further break down the peptides into shorter peptides and ultimately into individual amino acids. The final step in protein digestion occurs on the surface of the small intestinal epithelial cells where brush border enzymes, such as aminopeptidases and dipeptidases, further break down the remaining peptides into single amino acids. These amino acids are then absorbed across the intestinal wall into the bloodstream through specialized transporters. Once absorbed, amino acids are transported via the bloodstream to various tissues and organs throughout the body, where they are utilized for protein synthesis, cellular repair and maintenance, enzyme production, and other physiological processes. In summary, the proteins in cheese undergo enzymatic breakdown in the stomach and small intestine, ultimately resulting in the release of individual amino acids that are absorbed into the bloodstream for use by the body. When you consume cheese, the fat it contains undergoes a process of digestion and metabolism in your body. Here's an overview of what happens. Emulsification. Fat digestion begins in the stomach, where the mechanical churning action breaks down the cheese into smaller particles. However, the majority of fat digestion takes place in the small intestine. Before fat can be digested, it needs to be emulsified, which means breaking it down into smaller droplets. While salts, produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder, are released into the small intestine to aid in emulsifying fats. While salts surround the fat droplets, breaking them into smaller droplets that are more accessible to digestive enzymes. Enzymatic digestion. Once emulsified, pancreatic lipase, an enzyme secreted by the pancreas, acts on the fat droplets to break down triglycerides into fatty acids and monoglycerides. These smaller molecules are more easily absorbed by the intestines. Micelle formation. Fatty acids and monoglycerides, along with other fat-soluble compounds, combine with bile salts to form structures called micelles. This allows the fatty acids and monoglycerides to be transported across the watery environment of the intestinal lining for absorption. Absorption. Fatty acids and monoglycerides are absorbed through the cells lining the small intestine and enter the bloodstream. Once in the bloodstream, these molecules are transported to various tissues throughout the body for energy production, storage in adipose tissue, or utilization in cellular processes. Chylomicron formation. Inside the intestinal cells, fatty acids and monoglycerides are reassembled into triglycerides. These triglycerides, along with cholesterol and fat-soluble vitamins, are packaged into lipoprotein particles called chylomicrons. Chylomicrons are released into the lymphatic system and eventually enter the bloodstream, where they transport dietary fats to tissues throughout the body. Utilization and Storage Once delivered to tissues, fatty acids can be used for energy production through processes like beta-oxidation, stored in adipose tissue for later energy use, or incorporated into cell membranes for structural purposes. Overall, the process of fat metabolism after consuming cheese involves digestion, absorption, transportation, and utilization slash storage of fatty acids and other fat-soluble compounds throughout the body. When you consume cheese, which is a rich source of calcium, the calcium undergoes a process of absorption in your body. Here's how it typically occurs. Digestion and release of calcium. During digestion, the proteins and fats in cheese are broken down, releasing calcium along with other nutrients into the digestive tract. Calcium absorption in the small intestine. Calcium absorption primarily occurs in the small intestine, specifically in the duodenum and jejunum. The process of calcium absorption is complex and is influenced by various factors, including the presence of other nutrients and hormones. Calcium transporters. Calcium is absorbed across the intestinal lining through specialized transport proteins. These transporters include calcium channels and calcium binding proteins that facilitate the movement of calcium ions from the intestinal lumen into the epithelial cells lining the intestine. Calcium binding proteins. Within the intestinal cells, calcium binds to specific carrier proteins, such as calbindin, which help transport calcium across the cell membrane and into the bloodstream. Calcium entry into the bloodstream. Once inside the intestinal cells, calcium is transported across the basolateral membrane into the bloodstream. This process involves calcium pumps and other transport mechanisms that maintain calcium homeostasis in the body. Regulation by hormones. Calcium absorption is also regulated by hormones, including calcitriol, active form of vitamin D, and parathyroid hormone, PTH. Calcitriol enhances calcium absorption in the intestine by promoting the synthesis of calcium binding proteins. PTH increases calcium absorption indirectly by stimulating the production of calcitriol. Distribution and Utilization 
Once absorbed into the bloodstream, calcium is distributed to various tissues and organs throughout the body. Calcium plays a crucial role in bone health, muscle contraction, nerve function, blood clotting, and other physiological processes. Overall, consuming cheese provides a source of dietary calcium that contributes to overall calcium intake and supports various functions in the body. However, it's essential to note that the absorption of calcium from cheese and other foods can be influenced by factors such as the presence of other nutrients, individual differences in absorption efficiency, and overall dietary patterns. Lactose digestion is an important process for individuals who consume cheese and other dairy products, as lactose is the primary sugar found in milk and dairy foods. However, not all cheeses contain significant amounts of lactose, as the fermentation process during cheese production can reduce lactose levels. Lactose intolerance, a condition characterized by the inability to digest lactose due to a deficiency of the enzyme lactase, is relatively common in adults worldwide. For individuals who are lactose intolerant, consuming cheese may still be possible depending on the lactose content of the specific cheese and the individual's tolerance level. Here's how lactose digestion generally occurs. Lactase production. In individuals who produce sufficient amounts of the enzyme lactase, lactose digestion begins in the small intestine. Lactase is produced by cells lining the small intestine and is responsible for breaking down lactose into its constituent sugars, glucose, and galactose. Hydrolysis of lactose. Lactase hydrolyzes the lactose molecule by cleaving the bond between glucose and galactose, producing two separate sugar molecules. These monosaccharides, glucose and galactose, are then absorbed into the bloodstream through the intestinal lining. Absorption of glucose and galactose. Glucose and galactose are absorbed across the intestinal epithelium into the bloodstream via specialized transport proteins. Once absorbed, they are transported to various tissues throughout the body for energy production and other metabolic processes. Lactase deficiency and lactose intolerance. In individuals with lactose intolerance, insufficient levels of lactase enzyme are produced, leading to undigested lactose reaching the large intestine. Bacteria in the large intestine ferment the lactose, producing gas and short-chain fatty acids, which can lead to symptoms such as bloating, gas, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Reduced lactose content in cheese. Some cheeses, especially aged cheeses like cheddar, Swiss, and Parmesan, contain lower levels of lactose due to the fermentation process. During cheese production, bacteria metabolize lactose into lactic acid, reducing the lactose content of the final product. As a result, Individuals with lactose intolerance may tolerate certain types of cheese better than other dairy products. Individual tolerance. Tolerance to lactose-containing foods, including cheese, varies among individuals with lactose intolerance. Some individuals may tolerate small amounts of lactose, while others may need to avoid lactose-containing foods altogether or opt for lactose-free alternatives. Overall, the digestion of lactose in cheese and other dairy products depends on the individual's lactase enzyme production, the lactose content of the specific cheese, and the individual's tolerance level. Nutrient absorption is a crucial process that occurs in the small intestine after consuming cheese and other foods. Cheese contains various nutrients, including proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, and in some cases, lactose, a carbohydrate. Here's an overview of how nutrient absorption generally occurs. Protein absorption. Proteins from cheese are broken down into amino acids during digestion in the stomach and small intestine. These amino acids are then absorbed through the walls of the small intestine into the bloodstream. Once in the bloodstream, amino acids are transported to various tissues throughout the body where they are used for building and repairing tissues, as well as for the synthesis of hormones, enzymes, and other essential molecules. Fat absorption. Fats from cheese are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol during digestion in the small intestine. These breakdown products are absorbed into the intestinal cells, where they are reassembled into triglycerides. Triglycerides, along with cholesterol and fat-soluble vitamins, are then packaged into chylomicrons, which are released into the lymphatic system and eventually enter the bloodstream. From there, they are transported to various tissues where they are utilized for energy production, stored in adipose tissue, or incorporated into cell membranes. Carbohydrate absorption. If applicable, if the cheese contains lactose, a carbohydrate found in milk, it is broken down into glucose and galactose during digestion in the small intestine. These monosaccharides are absorbed into the intestinal cells and then transported into the bloodstream, 
where they are used as a source of energy by various tissues in the body. Vitamin and Mineral Absorption Cheese contains various vitamins and minerals, including calcium, phosphorus, vitamin A, vitamin B12, and zinc, among others. These nutrients are absorbed through the walls of the small intestine into the bloodstream. Calcium absorption, for example, is facilitated by active transport mechanisms in the small intestine and is influenced by factors such as vitamin D status and the presence of other nutrients in the diet. Water absorption. Water is also absorbed in the small intestine, along with nutrients, through osmosis. Adequate hydration is important for overall health and plays a role in nutrient absorption and various physiological processes in the body. Overall, the small intestine plays a critical role in the absorption of nutrients from cheese and other foods, ensuring that essential nutrients are transported to various tissues and organs throughout the body to support growth, development, and overall health. Overall, eating cheese provides your body with essential nutrients like protein, fat, calcium, and vitamins, which are important for overall health and well-being. However, like any food, it's essential to consume cheese in moderation as part of a balanced diet.